and welcome to Ghostmaker's Workshop. In this video, I am going to try to attempt to explain trajectory matters. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to see uh, my really terrible drawing. Here we have the scope. Here, this black thing represents the barrel and its attitude towards um, the, the scope. Um, you do not actually see it, but your scope, your line of sight, which is represented by this blue line, are actually flat, provided you're holding it flat, that is. Um, so the line of sight between you and your target, which is here, is a straight line. However, for the pellet or bullet to reach here, number two, which is known as your primary zero, assuming this is, let's say it's 30 yards 30 yards, right? Your, your primary zero. For it to reach here, the pellet will travel from the gun. It will go up through number one. Number one is your set, known as your secondary zero point. Um, now, I, it depends on your muzzle velocity and your pellet weight, but let's say that this is around 11 yards. 11 yards are your secondary zero. Primary zero being this one because this is where your main intention, um, intended zero is. So this is your primary zero. Number one is your secondary zero. So let's go back to where we were. The pellet will go up through your secondary zero point and then for a portion of the trajectory of the arc of the pellet the pellet will go above the blue line, which is your line of sight. So this line, this blue line here, will represent the center of your scope crosshair. So for a portion of that, between 11 yards and 30 yards, your secondary and primary zero, the pellet will now be traveling above the scope crosshair. In this area here, you will be required to hold under. Uh, and by hold under, I mean the um, if if your if your target is let's say 18, 18 a sort of 22 yards, which should be roughly in the centre here somewhere. You may depending on your pellet. Um, speed and weight, you may be required to hold under by one or two mil dots. This is all, these are, these are all uh, hypothetical numbers because it depends on what magnification you've got the scope set to and so on. But just so you get a general idea, here you will be holding under. When you get out to 30 yards, you will be able to aim bang on your crosshairs again if this is uh, where you've zeroed your gun. Out further, let's say down here is 40 yards, you, you may find that depending on the magnification set up on your gun, this will be um, a mil dot of hold over. So now you will be holding the line of sight, the centre of your crosshair, above to achieve a 40 yard kill. Now depending on how you've calibrated your gun, it could be one mil dot or two mil dot, but generally Pick a magnification that suits you for all your shooting, for all your hunting, and then stick with that magnification. And then, once you know um, where your pellet's going at these different interval uh, distances, they will always be the same, provided your magnification is the same, and you're going to shoot in the same weight and pellet. <laughs> right, another thing I would like to cover is Kant's error. 
Um, I've recently bought a device called uh, an Acu cover, which goes on the back of the scope, and it's got these little chevrons that point towards your crosshair. Um, I'll try and, try and indicate it on this reticle representation. Little chevrons like this that are on the back of the cover. Now, I saw the advert for this on Airgun TV. And what it also um, is intended to defeat is a, is a thing called parallax error. And um, what this does, um, what parallax error is, is when you don't put your head back in exactly the same position on the scope, um, the crosshair will actually show up in a different place and this will move your point of impact. Um, and this device was designed, intended, um, to get rid of um, parallax error. But can error is where you're tipping the rifle over. Sorry, dogs are having a mad moment. Are you having a mad moment, Oz? Um, can error is where you're tipping the gun over to one side. Or, and um, this reticle, let's say your target is at 40 yards and you're holding the reticle upright correctly and it's mounted on your gun completely upright. Your pellet will fall below your line of sight at 40 yards at whatever mil dot you've got it calibrated to. It could be one or two mil dots at 40 yards, for, for instance. However, if the rifle is counted, what will happen is the pellet will not follow the line. So if you're holding your second mil dot under on your target, but the reticle is counted to one side, if you can see here, this X is representing a likely place that that pellet will hit. This is known as false wind. Um, and it, you'll think that the wind, you know, it makes people think that the wind is pushing the pellet over. But if you count the rifle, generally at your... Um, at your primary and secondary zeros, it won't make a lot of difference. But the minute you start shooting, um, before, less, less likely it'll be a massive problem here, but further out, further afield, if you're shooting out to 50 yards, this false wind, can error, can cause you a lot of problems. Um, and I was skeptical as to whether the Acu cover would help me correct can error. Um, but I've been practicing with the gun. I've, I've just got this new camera by the way, so I haven't had a chance to do that video yet, but it will be coming over the next few days, maybe after this weekend's out of the way. Um, uh, it did actually help me recognise when I was counting the rifle, and parallax error um, seems to be non-existent. Um, I shot some really fantastic ropes with the R10 um, last week. You all right, Oz? Do you want to get in the video? Yeah. Say hello. Hello. What's this? Got? What's that thing got? What's that? What? There's nothing out there. Just want to spit the dog, don't I? Right, there you go. Right, so um, did I cover everything? Yeah. The blue line, this is your line of sight, just like so the red line is your pellet arc. I think I covered everything I wanted to. Um, if you've got a 2 2, you may want to try the um, SR12 reticle um, for your gun. Hawk Sport Optics doing a, an SR12 reticle. A friend of mine's just bought a, a Sidewinder tactical with the SR12, um, which he's going to be using on a 0.22 RT. Uh, I'm hoping that he's going to get some videos up of that and uh, give us an idea how well that you get somebody with the SR12 reticle. Snoop, there's a job for you. Um, so, I, I'm, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna change the uh, scope on my, on my R10. I'm gonna be putting a TAC 30 um, 44 mil objective. I'm not quite sure on the magnification that I'm gonna go for yet for that. Um, but I'm probably gonna go with the half mil dot which gives me a lot more um, finer indication and a lot more aiming points um, on, the, on the reticle. 
um, with the 44mm objective it will allow me to get the scope closer to the barrel which is how I want my gun set up, that is a personal thing um, that everybody can choose for themselves. Anyway, so important things to, to, for, for all this to work correctly, scope alignment, make sure you buy the best available scope mounts you can. I use Sportsmatch UK mounts, they are rail specific um, so that you can make sure that your scope is actually in the middle of your gun. If the rail is machined off to one side slightly, your scope will be off to one side slightly and then further down range that will be exaggerated tenfold so your pellet will be going off left or right. So scope alignment, very important. Um, uh, reticle alignment, making sure that when you put your scope in your uh, mounts that the crosshair is 100% right. I've got a video on that showing you how to use uh, a level and a plumb line to get your reticle straight. So there's a video on my channel for that. Um, I think that's about it actually. Scope alignment is very, very important. Um, and have a look at the Acky cover video, video on Airgun TV. There will be one coming up. I'm going to be reviewing the one that I bought um, over the next week or so. Um, but Nigel Allen's got a really good video of it on his channel and it was the one that made me think well I, I need to try this and give it a go. Uh, I was really sceptical about the claims that it would help me stop counting the rifle because it's something that I do. If you notice in some of my other videos um, I used to have a, a level, uh, a gun level, scope level uh, on the top of my scope um, to try and counter um, can error. Um, I kept making a mental note of where I was holding the gun and hoping that the memory would come in and I'd start um, not counting the rifle. Um, but I'm using this Acu cover now and it does really seem to be working and um, the groups are showing that. Um, I should have an accuracy video going up so now I've got the new camera I'm also going to be trying to get that ND3 footage that I've been after. Um, this camera does work in low light situations. You'll probably notice from this video um, that the quality is a lot better than it has been in the past as well. So I'm hoping that it will do as well out in the field as it has here today. So, uh, on the go smoker, you've been watching the air gun workshop. This was called Trajectory Matters. Thanks for watching. Oh, uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, click this link here. Bye for now.